Is this the worst loss the Badgers have faced in the last 25 years? The last quarter century, is this the worst? What a horrific weekend for Wisconsin football. Justin and I aren't just sad. Now we're angry, and we're going to talk all about it. Little bright spot for basketball, but even they suffered a bad loss. I'm Rajiv. He's Justin. It's the Bucky Report. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh, my God. Game analysis. Touchdown, Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Thanks for joining us. And on Wisconsin. Welcome into the Bucky Report. We are your hosts, Rajiv Chabra and Justin Julka, in for our full weekend episode talking about Frankly, a bit of a disastrous weekend in Madison, a tough loss Friday night, but more importantly, the Wisconsin Badger football team had an epic, epic disaster. We are at the Bucky Report on Twitter, at the Bucky Report on YouTube, wherever you can get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, all of those. Um, Justin, how are you feeling, man? I mean, it's been a day. Um, I have a little bit of reprieve because my Colts won today. Thank God. Uh, yeah. But I mean, geez, like... How are you feeling? It's it's been it's been a rough weekend. What what is it? What do they call the 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 process of of grief? I think I'm like on acceptance at this point. <laughs> so so I've moved through the process right now. I I'm hoping that the coaches are in the same mindset that I am at this point, and that's that's what my solace is at this point. I'm I'm hoping that they know what needs to be done in going into the off season they're now in evaluation mode and just strictly looking at what they see on the field and saying, all right, this is, these are the guys that have to go. This is, these are the guys that have had a whole season to prove that they're invested and we're not seeing it. We're not seeing development. We're not seeing you get better. We're not seeing the effort level that we expect from you out on the field. And now we're just not going to tolerate it. And how we're not going to tolerate it is we will recruit over you and we're going to push you out the door because Luke Fickle's making a lot of money to win, and I don't think that he is going to sit here and just be like, play Mr. Nice Guy with this. He can't afford to. It's going to cost him his job. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to get into it. We're also going to talk a little bit of basketball as well. Tennessee uh, came into the Cole Center and beat the Badgers 80-70 to on Friday night. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit, and we'll do a quick, quick preview um, of Nebraska next week. Yikes. Uh, let's start with our three three takeaways from the week. I'll go first. Um, number one for me, <clears throat> the rest of the Big Ten is literally leaving us in the dust when it comes to improvement on a week-to-week basis. That's It's just unacceptable. Um, we're the only, I feel like we're the only team that's just not improving. Number two, I've come to realize now that in order for us to move forward, we're going to have to take some step, steps back. And, as, and it's okay with me to take a step back this season if necessary, which is what's kind of happening. But it must come with two steps forward after this. Like we're, we need to see if we're going to go down a little bit and we're going to have the year that we're having, we need to see a big improvement next year, especially when it comes to improvement throughout the game. And number three, our basketball team could be special uh, this year. Not going to be great. We're still going to have some scoring droughts, which we had, but we can be special and we'll see how that goes. Justin, what are your three three big takes from the week? Number one, I will call you on that a little bit because Nebraska and Minnesota were terrible this last week. And while they did look like they were getting better, <clears throat> they definitely took a step back this week and were just flat out bad. Well, they guess when they're going to Nebraska's, gonna Nebraska's on their third string quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah, that's that's the downside of it. It's like Who's who's worse <laughs> out of the three of us? That's okay. what that was. That's what we're gonna find out <laughs> over the next two weeks. Um, number one, this team quit. Like they're they're, and I, I don't want to say everyone did, but there are a lot of players that are we're not seeing the effort level that's required. We're we're just seeing the mental errors. Like players are not locked in mentally, and that's has continued this whole season. Yeah, and that to me says you're not invested. Like we have the the one thing that we've taken in the past from like the old defense that we used to watch and things like that was we didn't seem to make a lot of errors. Like we'd physically get beat on a play because we just weren't athletic enough. But for the most part, guys did what they were supposed to do. 
we're seeing a lot of guys not do what they're supposed to be doing. And that tells me you're not invested. You're not 100% locked in. That's fine in the first couple weeks of the season when you're in a new scheme to make some mental gaffes. It's not fine week 10 that you're still making stupid mistakes and messing stuff up that you shouldn't. The busted coverage that led to the one of the touchdowns for Northwestern to me was infuriating because I'm looking at it. I'm like, how are you guys not on the same page at this point in the season? Like that should not happen. Um, and then finally, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll throw you a basketball one. I am actually very high on this team because Tennessee played a really good game mm-hmm. against us in that game. And we hung around with them. I think we gave a B. I think that we saw Wisconsin's B plus effort in that game. And I think for a lot of that portion of that game, we got to Tennessee's a game and we just weren't quite there in a game where we had both playing at our B level. I think that that's a game that we could potentially win. Yeah. So, so yeah. Hot, good, good takes for sure. for sure. Good takes for sure. Especially when it comes to basketball, <clears throat> I'm going to put a comment up here. I'm all about being called out. Uh, Seth says, has Rajiv come to realize that 6-6 six six is definitely a reality? Seth, you were right, bud. You were right. I was. I said multiple times that there was no way we were going to we a 6-6 six and six team. And now 6-6 six and six might be, hey, that might be a victory. <laughs> I mean, at this point. Um, all right, so let's let's get into this a little bit. I um, was not on the reaction show with you on Locked On Badgers. Um I am having a rough time with this. I got to say, this is um, this one. Let it out, really, man. Let it, let out the venom. This one really hurt. This one really hurt. I um, honestly, I just feel like, look, as fans, I mean, we we live and breathe this team. I live and breathe this team. You live and breathe this team. Ryan does. These people that are listening to us right now and and will listen to the show. I know we're all fans out there, and it stings when you have this much emotional investment in a team mm-hmm. and you see a performance like that. You see a performance where we play Indiana and we just can't do shit in the fourth quarter. We can't score. And then when you see a game in Northwestern where once again, the, the defense actually holds up in the second half, they give the offense numer- numerous chances. Can't do a thing. There looks like there's no heart. There looks like there's no yeah. effort. There is mental mistakes all over the field. People don't want to play. Hey, guess what? You don't want to play. Don't play. You don't want to exactly. be in this part of this program. Get out of the program. And then, and, and, and honestly, like I, I want to say I fully believe in Luke Fickle still. I want to say that. like Luke Fickle is, I think, the future of this program, and I believe, I absolutely believe that he will take us to new heights. But he this he is responsible for this. This It's not acceptable to have this many players on the field. I If people don't want to play, then change them. And you know what? Find guys on that team that will, because I guarantee you, even if they're freshmen, put them on the field. You, you're not, you're, you can you can redshirt everyone now from the, if they had, that hasn't played. Get them on the field and give someone else a chance. Because this lack of energy and lack of enthusiasm is driving me crazy. We fans pay hard earned money for this team going to games, paying for the Peacock subscription, whatever you did, however you support this team, mm-hmm. every <clears throat> you do it for like it, we're, we're, we're paying for that entertainment. We're paying for this and we deserve a better product. Okay. We do. Yeah. Like th- this is absolutely ridiculous. I've just, I, I I understand that I let myself get really high on this team, and I, I I totally hear that. And I and maybe we was just it was overblown, but and maybe the talent was. But let me tell you what's not okay: not seeing improvement throughout the year. That is a hallmark of any good team and any average team in the conference. You have to be able to do yes. that. Northwestern's done that. Indiana's done that. And I'm sorry, but I just you can't do that. You can't do that. In order to be a good team, you have to improve throughout the year, improve throughout your time at the university, improve its constant levels of improvement. And then when you take those constant levels of improvement and that development, which this program has always been and has always had, when you add great talent that Luke Fickle can bring in, that's when you become a champion. But none of that happens if you can't develop and grow and improve week to week. Mm -hmm. And we are falling back very, very quickly. It is absolutely, it's absurd that we couldn't do a single thing offensively against that team yesterday. No matter what our defense gave up in the, in the second half, I understand they had a rough first half. That was Northwestern looked, they ran down the field time and time again. I get it. But honestly, I'm just, I'm so over this. I'm so over this football season. I'm so happy basketball is here. I just, I can't handle the fact that, and then you, you, you know, we, we, we're, we're concerned about people not giving their effort. We're, we're concerned about people wanting to leave, wanting to transfer. They get out. 
Don't play. Fickle, pull the people I, off the field. Pull the people off the field. I am not concerned. I will be else. blunt on that. I am far from concerned with players threatening to transfer. I I don't care. I want pl- – honestly, if we get players from the transfer portal that are less talented but actually can follow the scheme and give effort, we'll be a better team. There's zero doubt about that in my mind at all. But I want to get back kind of to, to what we've been saying about some of this is – Looking at this team with as passionate as we are and as much energy and enthusiasm and everything that we put into this, nothing pisses me off more than watching guys who don't give a crap play out on the field. Because it's like you have life by the balls right now, and this is what you're doing with it. Like you're a joke. Like get out of there. Like and honestly, you have you don't deserve what you've been given with that scholarship and everything else that you've been handed. Because look at it this way. You could just play hard for this season and leave and transfer if you're not going to be invested. You could at least play hard for the season, and you're not even choosing to do that. So to me, I hope you transfer after the season, and I hope nobody picks you up because what they're going to find on film is that you've played like garbage for the entire season and that you don't play hard. And why would somebody hand you a scholarship in that situation when you're not going to do it? So I'm I'm over it at this point. Make the hard decisions. And I agree with you with the coaching staff. They played Mr. Nice Guy far too long this season. At some point, and it probably should have happened. And this is what I, I brought it up with Ryan when we were talking about it. Leipold came into Kansas. That team was awful. And he came in and he told him that he was going to be a hard ass. And he did it from day one because he knew he had to. That team had to have a culture shift. Well, guess what? This team needs to have a culture shift. And you have to go in there and say, listen, I don't care. I have film now for two seasons of you not playing hard. You're gone. I don't want you on this team. You are a cancer that we need to get cut out because I need to get players that are going to go out there and give their all. And even if they're less talented, I trust that they're going to have their head on right. And I trust that they're going to give me everything they've got on every given play. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Fine. But at least they're playing hard and doing the things I'm asking for. <clears throat> and that's what we saw from Northwestern, a team that galvanized over the fact that they lost their coach and they went out there and played hard, even though they're a less talented team. And that's why they might get themselves into a bowl game this year, just because of the fact that they're going to go out there and play hard and they're going to play together as one. And yeah. Wisconsin is not playing hard and playing together as one. It's it's absolutely maddening. <clears throat> Let's get some comments. Thanks to all for, for joining us live tonight. Um, Slim Lewis says, the Badgers are 42nd in the nation in run defense. That is abysmal for a Big Ten team. Yeah, I mean, really, it's rough. Wes uh, Mullenix says, I've been this I've been this emotional for four years all the way down to rock bottom in Indiana or Northwestern and or Nebraska next week to Minnesota. Tyler says, Nolan Rucci better start next week. I know Justin certainly has thoughts about that. <laughs> Tyler also says, we need to become bowl eligible just for the extra practices alone. A Kefo, hope for six and six expect five and seven. Zach Bart says, was at the Northwestern game and on the sidelines, guys looked like statues. Looked like they didn't care and didn't want to be there. Northwestern was fired up. Making a statement meant something. Results show. And finally, Joshua Justice says, that game was so depressing yesterday. I agree, though. You either play your heart out or you leave. Justin, I mean, that's that's the, I feel like that's the theme of what's going on right now. I understand that there's, look, you're getting to the end of the year. You're not going to win the the division. You don't really have a lot. You're, made, you're basically playing for a shitty bowl game at this point Mm -hmm. and you know it's important to get that it's important to get though that keep that streak going get those extra practices of course but at this point like there are people on the team that clearly don't want to be there and they're going to transfer and that's fine but i think it's incumbent upon this staff to make those tough decisions like you said it's time to stop being nice about it i think you you put that well like you just let's make the tough decisions and let's and if if it it means it costs us wins more if, if it means that we struggle a little more because we had to put pressure out there so be it because guess what? The performance we put up against Indiana and Northwestern, it doesn't matter who we played. We could have played, we could have played a bunch of 18 year olds and it would have been fine. Yeah. Like we still lost the game. I want to see what we have and put people on there that are going to work hard and are I, going yeah. to give it and give it for the team. I was gonna say I can tolerate mistakes if you're if you're playing hard. Like if if it's out there and you're having it, but that's not what we're seeing. Young players are going to make mistakes. I honestly, but I look at it like things like we're, we're talking about Nelson. He's been making mistakes the whole season. At least mm-hmm. if we put Rucci out there, I trust that it may not look pretty, but I'm hopeful that he'll at least bust his butt to not make, you know, to get the job done. Like three holding calls in a game is a joke. Constant false starts is a joke. Like these are mental errors that are like, come on. 
Like you, you've got to figure this stuff out. You know, defensively, the linebackers still not great, but the defense, I mean, the lack of energy that, that, that they showed on defense and, and this team needed the defense to, to kind of run the show to, to get them off to a good start against Northwestern. I was worried about something like this happening because of the way the offense has been playing, because I don't trust the offense to get up off the mat. If they don't like, if this game had, if this game was zero, zero after the first quarter, I think there's a chance that the offense might've been able to get its act together and get some confidence. When we got put behind, I'm like, we're done. Like this, this offense just is not clicking enough. And you notice it every time something goes wrong and Mordecai is more efficient than what Locke was. But for whatever reason, our third down percentage with him is abysmal. And it's just like, if we don't get it done in the first two downs, then we screw it up every time on third down because it seems like the team presses. And it's like, I, I don't understand what the deal is with it. It's so frustrating. I don't know if it's him or what's going on where it's like he just tightens up and just doesn't want to throw it unless it's there. But for whatever reason, this team is just a nightmare right now. And it's you got to play some of these young guys to at least find out you have it. And you talked about the bowl game. Yeah, I think you like if there, ever there was a team that needed it, it's for this. I'd say it's because you got to find which of the young guys you can throw into that two deep next year that you think can help you. Because most of these guys that are on the in the two deep right now, I don't think we want back. Like, there's a lot of positions that, like, I'm hopeful that we have new starters at, and there may be guys with eligibility left that I'm like, just go. Like, we you're not getting the job done. I don't trust that you're going to be a, a worthwhile player going into next year. Yeah, uh, a couple of comments about Hunter Wooler. Will Hannes says Wooler said what needed to be said. Grant says, what did you think of Wooler's post game comments? Telling. Justin, did you, did you hear? Um, yeah, I, I heard it. Game? I, I think he was dead on. And I loved hearing that from a player because that's exactly how it should be. Like, listen, I know you want to keep a certain amount of that in the in the locker room, but we're well past the point of, of guys, you know, sparing egos. I, I would have been fine with him throwing names out, honestly. And I, I know you don't do that, but at this point. Yeah, I'm okay with that not happening. Yeah, yeah I, I am I am too with it not happening. But I in the locker room, I hope, I hope to hell that that's happening. Like I, I, people need to be called out. And, and it's clear when I hear a player come out and say the issue is not coaching, it's players not doing what they're told. That tells me all I need to know about that locker room, that there's clearly guys that aren't bought in that are in the too deep that need to be flushed out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, coming up, we're going to get into, um, is the program still head in the right direction? Um, players that we really feel like shouldn't be playing and should be playing um, and up next here, let's talk about this. First of all, I also want to say one happy Diwali. It's one of the, it's the biggest Indian holiday of the year for any Indian people out there. Big, big holiday for us today. Um, also my surroundings are a little different. I'm in a new office in my house. So there will be some decor going up behind me soon. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you can see this, it's a little different than my normal background, making some changes. So, you know, trying to, um, brighten things up a little bit, but, uh, all right, Justin, is this the worst loss? the Badgers have, fa have suffered in the last 25 years. And let me just kind of preface this by saying, I, I put this on Twitter yesterday. I got a lot of responses. So thank you to all for doing that. And I mean, I really think that it might be one of them. Now for me, the 2001 loss, 63 to 30, I think to Indiana, I was at that game. I was sitting in the front row and I wanted to throw up watching Indiana go up 32 to nothing. Was that the, uh, the Randall L game? Antoine Randall L. That's yeah. correct. And it was horrible. <laughs> But this loss, the reason that I think it's worthy of discussion, Justin, is because of the way that we played. I mean, I, even against Indiana, we had a little bit more offense. Like, this was atrocious. Three points basically going into the garbage time touchdown at the end. I mean, we could not do anything against a team that is not good. A team that barely beat Howard, that doesn't really have any kind of signature wins, that has been playing better, lost to Iowa, they did beat Maryland. They've had a couple things, but the the, the the just total demoralizing like nature that that game had. Some, some people talked about Illinois last year. That was obviously my law, my game last year that was bad. Ryan, we asked Ryan today. Ryan said 59 to nothing against Ohio State. That was his loss. And I, I know that's probably the biggest loss that a lot of people feel. Um, but again, that's Ohio State. To me, Losing to Northwestern like this is brutal. It's not going to overtake Indiana for me from 2001, but I'm telling you, it's on the short list. 
This was so deflating. And I'm curious. So it, by, by the way, put any, so Dark Ray says this isn't the worst loss. Many of us expected this based on how we've been playing. Fair enough. That's fair, by the way. Uh, because I, I think a lot of people did kind of expect it, but I didn't expect to lose this game. And I, and I'll tell you what, no one expected to lose both of these last two games, but Justin, where does this kind of rank, but put it in perspective of what you're feeling about this loss versus ones in the last quarter century. I would say actually Illinois last year hit me harder because I expected us to rebound after getting, you know, boat raced by Ohio state. And I, I knew we were going to lose to Ohio State. Like, I was hoping we could stay close in that game, but I, I knew we were going to lose to them. The fact that we just didn't show up and just laid down and played dead in that game caught me off guard. I I thought that there was a chance that these last – that, like, what happened against Northwestern could happen. And I called it based off of when we were coming into it and we spoke last week. I said – these last three teams had been showing progress as the season had gone on and we haven't shown it. So if they just play cleaner than us, we can lose to any one of this, these teams. And what happened? Northwestern came out and played a heck of a lot cleaner than us. And it cost us like we shoot ourselves in the foot more than any team I can remember in Wisconsin history. So from that standpoint, I will agree with you looking at the level of play that we're seeing from this team. This may be the worst level of play that I think I can remember in quite some time. Maybe 2008 is the last time. But, man, we're, we're going back a long time before I can remember them looking this inept on the field. Um, so you're so you're saying Illinois? That's that's your, yeah. your thing. Is that that one that one hit me way harder than yes. This. I was yeah. I was livid after that game. I can buy that. I I can buy that. I feel like that um, that one that one I was like a rock bottom. I think I think for this year it's like. And the Indiana loss really kind of cemented it too. But this one, the, the Indiana loss took the, the football season and just kind of threw it to the ground. This game just stomped us into the ground, like even worse. Like this one just made us feel like crap. And I now don't feel anymore, two, Richie, even that's the problem. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like you guys know that I'm one of the most optimistic Badger fans out there. I always believe that we're going to do great things, and I still do. But this is just a kick in the nuts. I mean, that that's exactly what it is. And I, I just, I don't think I've, I, I, the Illinois game was bad. The Indiana game is always going to be bad for me because I was there. But I think this game hurts me more than, than Illinois last year because I was so high on this. And I just, I can't take the lack of effort and the lack of heart and dedication. I've said that a lot on this show. I just don't, I don't want to see that because this is a product now. This is a business. Like the, the, we, we, we pay our hard-earned money. This just should not be happening. And I'm okay. If we're not talented enough to beat teams. That's fine. But seriously, don't don't give me that. Don't give me this crap that we're not talented enough to beat Indiana Northwestern. And guess what? We got guys back. Jenner Mordecai came back, which that's very debatable. Braylon Allen, Jim Ray DK. I mean, Allen didn't play the whole time, but like we we like this is not. There are no excuses. There are no excuses for the way we're playing, and it's just it's driving me nuts. No, I completely agree with you. From Mike here, will this season hurt recruiting? Um, my my gut instinct says probably not a lot. Players, the, the kids that are getting recruited don't look at this the same way. They're not as passionate about it as we are, and they're being sold on moving forward. Like, they're not a part of this team. They're going to be more, like, linked to the, their actual team, the guys coming in with them. So from that regard, they're going to be sold a lot on – there's opportunity here for you. Now, there may be a couple of fringe guys who we weren't the biggest offer for them or they have like a, a dream offer. There's a couple of guys. Xavier Lucas is a guy that we need to keep an eye on who has Florida State very heavily sniffing around on him who may leave. He, In all honesty, we could be undefeated right now and he probably would still go to Florida State just because of the fact that it's, it's one of his hometown schools. So... For him, that's a big offer and one, you know, it's like a kid from Wisconsin. You know, if we're if we're playing really well in a given year, we expect to get those kids. And that's kind of what what's happening with Florida State this year. If they hit and they want somebody, they're probably getting them. Yeah. All right. Weekly superlatives. All right, Justin. So one of the questions that we we asked at the top of the show is who should be playing and who shouldn't be playing? Um, this is actually going to be our first um superlative of the day is who needs to be benched and who who needs to play that isn't playing right now. Someone that you want to see in the lineup that you're not seeing now, whether it's a freshman or whether it's someone who you feel like needs more playing time and who are, who are you tired of seeing out there? Um, I think Allegro 
I'd like to see get more snaps this coming week. I think, and, and I I understand he's a true freshman. It's it's a lot to ask for him mentally not to make mistakes. But I saw motor and I saw athleticism from him. That is something that we haven't seen from the middle the middle linebacker group. Alexander Smith, for the love of God, stop putting him out there. He's been brutal this whole season. But honestly, this is a guy who was much- looking to get drafted, and he's terrible. There's not much back there, Justin. Like I played to Clona. I, I would yeah, rather, I mean, rather I, see I, if I, I Clona's going to be a guy that can play next season. I want to find out if he's a guy that can can potentially be out there. And then I would say offensively, could for the love of God, take Jack Nelson off the field. Like he he hurts you so many times in a game. And uh, honestly, piss off PFF. Your grading of him is the biggest joke I've ever seen. It's so frustrating to see a guy consistently be graded out as above average and show a total crap fest at that position and be like, are you kidding me? Like, how is a guy that's consistently hurting you on office? He has negative 30 yards he accounted for in just his errors alone in that game. And we're going to say that this guy had an above average game at his position? Like, you single-handedly can say he killed three drives. Like, are you kidding me? Whoever's grading this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you on a lot of those. Um, I, I agree with you on Allegro. I think that he's clearly got a lot of talent and it's like, to, like to see him out there more. Um, obviously to me, put, can we please put Tretch on the field? On, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like let's get Mr. Kekahuna out there. Everybody who's ever watched the guy, any film, anything, anyone we've heard from at practice, they're all like, yeah, the guy just gets separation. He knows how to get open. And that's what we're missing, by the way, with these receivers. They're not getting open. And when they do get open, then you got Mordecai out there throwing them deep, bad, deep balls. Anyway, um, so so that's one for me. I, so Ryan, during during the game yesterday, Justin and Ryan and I were chatting, and, and Ryan was just all about Mordecai does not need to be playing. I know you guys, he talked about this on your show too. But I, I'm kind of with him. Like I, I do feel like – I, look, he transferred here. I'm sure there was some discussion. If you're healthy, you know, he has to play kind of thing. I get it. But I want more to kind of sit down and I want brain lock to play because I saw something in lock and I know he had a bad game, uh, a really bad game against Indiana, but he has future potential. And the bottom line is he's going to be here next year and Mordecai's not. And I know that's harsh when, when a guy, but look, our season's basically over. What are you playing for? And frankly, Again, we had missed deeper balls that I think Brain Lock hits yesterday. And then and, and Mordecai can do, do things that Lock can't. And I, I I hear that. But I'm sorry, I want Lock to play. Skylar Bell, I love you, man. I had a lot of hype and hope yes. for you coming into the season, but I'm sorry. It's done. It's time to sit down. Um, I want I want Kekahuna out, out there. And because there's just – And Anthony. It's, Anthony it's, yeah. Anthony. And – from an offensive line perspective, how about just anybody, please? I mean, can we just have anyone else? I'm with you on cornerbacks. I would like to see – I mean, I would love to see Amari Snowden out there. Like, come on. I want to see Austin Brown out there more. Put some freshmen um, out there. I don't Zach care. Man. I want to see what we have because I'm sorry, but it's ridiculous. Now, let's talk about this. Um, Chris Hart says, play Evers. Let's get crazy at this point. What are you, What's your take on Evers? I know we, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not he should play out there and what do you think? Does he need to play or should he play? I I want to know for a fact that he's not capable of playing. So part of me wants to see him out there. I But I don't know. There's some things that I've heard. I'm, I'm not going to elaborate too much on it. But, it, you know, I question whether the gap is as big as, as what we're seeing and, and what's going on there. And it, I'm hopeful that he's given the opportunity going into next year. I don't anticipate it this year, um, but I'm hopeful that we'll see a, a big jump from him in the spring and moving forward. Maybe he pushes, maybe he's the guy next year. I don't think Locke has grabbed that position and has it in any kind of hold at this point. I think the staff may look at somebody as a, a transfer again, but we'll see. I mean, it's, it's going to be really hard going into next year. I think – here, there's two ways to look at this. I think you can look at it, and I think Mordecai does still give you the best chance to win. But I also think that you want to see what Locke actually has so you know how bad you have to hit the portal going into next year if you if you need to. Does he show you enough where you think there's enough growth there that he can be your starter, or do you need to find somebody else who you can bring in? Because I'm not sure that you have somebody that you feel comfortable with going into next season at this point. Um yeah, it's the quarterback room is, is so hard to really have a, a firm grasp of what to do 
with. And that's, yeah. that's the tough part. Like I can't really be against anything they want to do because we need a win yet in order to be bowl eligible. So I, I want us to get a win regardless of how we're going to do this. I'd love to see Locke do it if they put him out there, but I do think Mordecai gives you a slightly better chance. Yeah. And again, nobody's really looked great on the offensive side. We had an Iowa fan in here. Savvy says, despite a better season, I'm worried for the future. And one thing, Wisconsin and Iowa fans can all agree on. P.S. P.J. Fleck is the most punchable face. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. that is, that's never changing. <laughs> all right, uh, Justin, player or coach you're most disappointed with right now? Um, Man, I it's got to be Alexander Smith for me. Um, He's just been bad this season. Like, I expected him to be a guy who was pushing for draft stock and potentially could have gotten up into like that fourth or fifth round range. And it, he just has not, like, he's not even a camp guy right now. I don't think looking at what we've seen from him. And I don't know if he's just not bought in or if the scheme is that tough, but like, there's not really anything crazy that we're seeing in the scheme. That's, that's different than what he saw in previous years. His man to man skills have just been brutal. Like anytime he's got a, be on a guy like he's just trailing by like three or four steps and it's like what is going on yeah like it's not like you're getting picked and somebody's like made you and you know taking you out of the play you're just behind like your your reactions are bad this season yeah um i'm gonna say i i'm gonna say luke fickle i feel like i'm just this i that's who i blame for this loss i i, I blame luke fickle and i think that you know, because it starts at the top and, and look, I'm all for Luke Fickle for the future. I want to make that very clear. I love Luke Fickle. I think that he is the future. And I think it's fair as fans for us to still believe in him for the future, but be critical of what we're seeing right now, because what we're seeing right now is not up to our standards. It's not even up to like the standards of the last 20 years. I mean, it's not, it's not good enough. So because I want to see players out there that, that want to play and I want to, I want to see changes made despite losing, like going back to talent. Sometimes you got to make these decisions <clears throat> and when you're not seeing improvement from week to week, and in fact, you're regressing week to week, that's on the coach. So I, I'm, I'm that's where I'm going with it. I say yes and no with that. I mean, I, I think there was going to be some regression based off what we're seeing here, but the, the, the players that quit, quit last year, I feel fairly confident in saying are probably the same players that are quitting this year, which tells me those are evaluation issues. We, we missed on guys. We thought we had some mental toughness that wasn't there in certain players and and some guys who really care. And it's, there's just, this team lacks leaders. Like there's just nobody that's taking the bull by the horns and saying, get it done guys, or taking accountability from the player's perspective either. Like I want somebody out on that field that when somebody's screwing up is chewing somebody out. That's what we need to see out there. And the coaches can do so much. And I agree with you that from a coaching standpoint, if you're not getting the job done, you need to give that player some accountability and say, I'm putting so-and-so out there for a series or whatever. Yeah. I mean, we're not get even your, get your head right. And we're not doing it. Like we're not playing good football. Like what is, what is the worst case scenario? You go three and out. Like if, if we, if we put Rucci in, is he really going to be that much worse playing left tackle than, you know, being a turnstile or getting a penalty every other, you know, play? I don't think so. So I just, at this point, I'm tired of, you know, stop being the good guy, be the hard ass, go out there and basically let these guys know it's not going to be given to you because at this point I'm over it. 100%. All right. Strategy or play or really kind of anything you, you never want to see again that we've been, you've been seeing this year. So I'll I'll start this one for me. It is the uh, throwing passing to the running back in the flat. I'm, honestly, I'm I'm over that. I, I I like having a safety valve, and I think that, I know that's an important part of Longo's offense. But no, I don't want to see that anymore. And I would really like to see some zone defense, please, a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. We don't have the cornerbacks to go man to man a lot in a lot of these cases. So let's be a little bit more inventive um, with our zone and and ski and add some more zone schemes to do something better defensively. Especially yeah, that first half, we just. We couldn't do anything. Now a lot of that goes down to run run defense as well, um, but but that's that's talent and and what we're seeing up front. But honestly, I just I'm, I'm over some of the some of the plays. Now for the most part, I don't hate the play calling going on. I don't hate the defensive strategy and scheme. There are just tweaks that I feel like really need to be made. The bigger drive, the bigger thing is the players and and who's out there and what's out there. Um, but again, I just feel like. 
God, the run defense yesterday. Holy crap. I mean, I can't just one more thing to just complain about. Yeah, the swing passes, I'm okay with coming back next year. I don't really want to see him anymore this year. I think next year you have more dynamic running backs that are going to be in the system, which makes a big difference. And a, a big part of it is, is I think that you need to get the ball out on time. It's got to get out quick to the running back. He's got to catch it with a head of steam and, and be able to be one cut and go upfield because if he's got to react and wait for that ball, the defenders are going to come on it hard. And right now the guys that we have are just not a fit for it. Like the, the running backs that we have are terrible in the passing game. And it is what it is. Um, defensively strategy, I, I just think we're missing players. We we're, we don't have any dudes. We have we have two guys on defense that I look at that are above average in Woolers and Hallman. And they're not the type of transcendent talents that you look at and you're like, this guy can cover up a lot. Woolers is the closest thing to it. And even he, he needs help because he can only do so much out there. You can scheme around him a little bit. Yeah. All right, Justin, this one's going to be a hard one. <clears throat> and I want it in the comments to put your, put your stuff in the comments. Who's hot. Give me a bright spot right now. Um, you know, generally you can, you can watch games throughout the season and you can find players who are, who are on the up and who are working their way to the team and doing things right. Give me one of those because it's, it's, it's a list is pretty thin. It is uh, on defense. I'll give you Allegro. You got a sack this last game. Um, he seems to have good things happen when he's out on the field. Like he had the little bit that he was out there versus uh, Illinois. Yeah. Illinois. And then in this game and on offense, I thought Anthony played pretty well for a guy getting more reps. He had three catches for 45 yards. I believe he did have a big and, drop or a play that he should have yeah. made in the end zone. I, I won't argue that, but it's for a guy getting his first playing time. He's at least making most of the plays and the drops is plaguing the whole wide receiver group. Mm -hmm. Pauling is the guy overall on offense that I would say, and you know he hasn't been perfect either, but he's he's doing a lot more than most of the other receivers are, which is consistently for the most part making plays, even though he has a drop here and there. But the the whole offense has been bad. Like yeah. these guys just aren't consistently making easy plays, and that's a problem. Yeah, for me, it's Pauling and Allegro. Um, I feel like those guys. Pauling is he, he's just he is he's the best receiver on the team. He's mm -hmm. our number one. He's the most dependable. He's doing the right things. He's getting open the best, at least from what we've mm -hmm. seen. He's clearly has built a relationship with both Braden Locke and Tanner Mordecai. So, you know, I think he he is that safety valve and and, and credit to him and kudos to what he's doing. And, and I appreciate that. So that, those are the guys I'm going to give credit to. I'm um, going to Allegro for sure. Because, yeah, you're right. Like, we see the future that that guy has, by the way. And it is special. And I'm excited to see what he can do. He's going to be a difference maker type athlete out there. Yeah. Uh, Brown is another one of those guys. He, you can see his athleticism and speed out there when he's out there. Tyler Strieber, your Borderlini, those snaps are looking faster. He has improved greatly over the last few weeks. They are, Finally. and he is. And I think from a, in terms of him being a center, in terms of playing the position, like once the once he snaps the ball, he's he's pretty good. So at this point, he's a guy that I I like seeing out there. You know, show some progress. Conversely, now who's not stock is down. This this is probably now. This conversely is the longer list. I'll take okay. this one. Yeah. I'm uh, Phil Longo. Sorry, but you're on this list. Um, I don't know what is going on. I don't know what uh, you know. It's just that's not good enough. We need to be more inventive. I feel like last year we talked a lot about predictability and what we were doing, and this year I don't know if we're as predictable, but we're just not effective. And we're not way. executing well at all. It's, it's execution. It's play calls, everything. We're just not there. So you're on this list. Alexander Smith. I'm sorry, man. Like, I don't know what's going on. Muma Jong Meta, Jordan Turner. I mean, like the, the entire inside of the but line. You can say this the entire linebacker group has been a Northwestern. Been terrible. This shredded season. our D our front seven shredded it i mean i'm sorry worst that, running team in the big 10 good lord and, and when the ball was snapped what did you see you saw this just jump all right that the the, the five offensive linemen for northwestern got before the ball was handed off they're they're three yards downfield already like they've already cleared three yards and that defensive line is on their heels no one's making a play no one's filling a gap the linebackers are getting caught up they're not finding their way through they're not fighting up, fending off blocks. It was a disaster. So that entire, I'm sorry, the front defensive front seven. Now again, second half, got to give them credit. We did stop them. We did, they didn't score in the second half. So kudos to the defense for doing their job in half number two, but half number one, that first quarter, 
Yikes. I'm stat was brutal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, Jack Nelson. Um, yep. He's, I mean, I, I, he's been there every week for me so far. Listen, there were a lot of people that were high on him and thought that he was like a fringe first round pick. And I just didn't see it last season. I didn't see him as a dominant player. I thought he was significantly better last year than he is this year, but he's regressed significantly. And it's clear that he doesn't fit in the scheme. He's a guy that I would be shocked if he does not, you know, I maybe he loves Wisconsin, but he's a guy that I would not be shocked if, if he looks at it from a business decision standpoint and says, there's a team out there that's, that's more of a run heavy team that I'm a better fit for. And for my draft stock, I'm going to, to go ahead and uh, make a move. Um, I think the guards have been pretty meh. Like they're, they're okay, but they're, they're they haven't been great. Um, receiver is a position is so underwhelming this season. Like we expected more from these guys. And it's, it's hard for me to say how much of that is on the quarterbacks and how much of that is on the receivers. But I think we expected the passing game to be significantly better than what it's been. It hasn't been remotely as efficient as what we've expected. And the big plays just haven't been there. Um, Honestly, quarterback is another position. Like it, they, they're linked together hand in hand, and those two, like we expected the passing game to take a big leap, and it just hasn't been there. And then on the defensive side, you said it. Alexander Smith has been really rough. Uh, Forkering, he's a guy who's taking a step up. I expect him to be kind of hit or miss, and he's had sometimes he's looked pretty good. Um, but he's yeah, also, then- I, I don't, I don't love him. He's not a guy that I expect necessarily starting next year. But he's getting – he's has an excuse more than Alexander Smith is. He was a guy that's spent three years in the Big Ten playing and starting. So, at this point, you should be much better than what you've been. Yeah. All right, before we get into our next uh, topic, let's get some comments up here. Dark Ray says, Phil Longo, why can't we throw the ball more than five yards? Zach Bart says, Jack Nelson, Alexander Smith, the longer the list is too long and will hurt me the more I add. Mike says, play Jamel Howard already, please. Yeah, Mike, I mean – I've heard, I've, I've said it many times. I know, I know maybe, maybe he really isn't ready, but I would sure love to see that size and athleticism on the defensive line because why not look at what we just put up against Northwestern and Indiana. Uh, Justin, I want your opinion here over and under on the number of players in the portal after Minnesota. This is from Grant. What do you think? How, I, throw, I, throw something out there. Does anybody know how long the portals open where players can enter? It's 30 days now, right? They change I it, I think. I think so. I think um, so, Justin. I think there isn't, isn't there, isn't it a longer one after the season, though? I, don't I know. think it may be if we if we make a bowl game, it might be after the bowl game where we see guys jump in. Um, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think it's gonna be 15 plus. Wow. I, it wouldn't yeah. shock me to see as many as 20 to 25. It depends I'm on how, the, I'm taking depends, the under on that. I think it depends how aggressive the coaches are. And I think there are a lot of people that are going to leave that are going to be like, this wasn't for me. Like, this is not – like, I think there are guys that they talked into staying who wanted to find out what it was, what, what this was going to be like, that are now going to look at it and say, all right, this isn't what I, you know, signed up for when I came in for Chris. I'm out. I'm going to go find a place that's a better fit for me. And that's fine. That That's the way it should be. Be, you know, no hard feelings. Go find what, what makes you happy. We need to get people in here who are going to buy into what we're doing here. And I, I've, one of the same things I, you know, I like that question, but I wanted to, to talk about something because the Phil Longo people that are out on him, there are people calling for his head already to be to be gone after this year, and I I really think people need to be cautious with something like that, because if you're jumping into a new offensive coordinator next year who is now another scheme change, sometimes you need to just let things kind of simmer and develop on their own and get better. Unless and so what I'm saying is unless Fickle is completely out on this scheme and says this just is not going to work, this is not what I want. I don't think that he should jump the gun and just be like, all right, throw it out the window. We're going to start over from here. I think that that might be an overreaction, and I think that might set you back again further. Hold that thought. We're going to get back to that in a second. Um, Patrick Minahan says, I know Fickle said bringing in a ton of transfers will only happen once this season. With a lot of players probably transferring out after this year, are we going to bring in a ton of them again? Yeah, I think we are going to bring in a ton of them again because I think now Fickle understands kind of what he's looking for. They're going to adapt exactly. Uh, the 19th Warrior says, over 3-3-5 three, three, defense, go back to the 3-4 or move to a 4-3. We can't stop the run. We're not playing the 3-3-5, three, three, just to be clear. We're playing a variation of the nickel. It's it's still a 
two four five two four and yeah. for the for the most part we've switched to that starting what before ohio state i think we started playing that against iowa we were mostly playing that if, and if it's we just, had if we had better inside linebackers we'd be stopping the run and if we had yeah. a run stuffer like if Keanu benton was still here if jamel howard turns yeah, out to be what we're hoping would. and then uh, dave leonard says those three running backs are going to make a huge difference um next year on offense no doubt about that um so Justin, let's talk about the future. You 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 started touching on Phil Longo. Um, let's kind of are we still heading in the right direction? Do you feel like so you, you, you brought up Longo? There's discussion about Trestle, and there was a lot of things on Twitter yesterday, just in general fans reacting, which I understand. Some people said, look, Fickle is clearly not a very good hire. Um, and and I, I vehemently disagree with that. I think yeah. Fickle is a great hire still. Uh, but where are you at on the future of Longo, which you already kind of said, Trestle and Fickle? Yeah. Um, so first off, I'm going to preface this by saying, listen, I think the culture at Wisconsin has been broken now for multiple years. This is not something that's new. I think that we were hopeful that we could build on what was there, but I think the foundation had rotted a little bit. And I think that that we saw that with our kind of downward trend that we've had over the last several years. Um, I think I still believe in what we're trying to do. I think that you can argue we have a perfect storm of everything being wrong this year. I, I don't think the coaches have been great, but I also don't think that Longo has called a perfect season. I think the execution has been bad. I think players have not bought in fully to what we're trying to do. And I think that that's been a massive part of what the issue is. I think we have players that aren't comfortable in what we're trying to do, which has also been a, a massive aspect of it, which is why like, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of turnover. Uh, Trestle on the other, um, you know, if we're going to dive in that rabbit hole, um, I think he's been pretty good. Like I, there are people that are talking about Leonard that they think that the things would have been massively different. I don't think it would have been. I think this is like 2018 Jim Leonard defense, except now you don't have a really good linebacker core. So I think he would have regressed a lot too. I don't think we would have been – I just don't think the pieces are there to be a great run-stopping defense. Um, it really is not helping having Mullins out. He's a guy who's actually pretty stout in the middle there, and he hasn't played like the last, what, five, six weeks now? He's been out. Has it been longer than that? Has he played this season? I can't remember if he has. Rajiv, I think you're – I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I had my muted. I don't feel like – I don't, if he has, it sure doesn't feel like it. I mean, that's, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, so for me with Trestle, let's kind of start there. Um, I think that first of all, his halftime adjustments have been great. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's playing a really good third quarter defensively. We've, our offense, our defense has put our offense in position in yeah. Iowa game, Illinois game, Ohio state. Indiana Northwestern. Those five games, our our off our defense has put our offense in positions in the second half to win every one of those games, including Ohio State. So I, I will give Tressel a lot of credit for for halftime adjustments. He's done a fantastic job with that. When you lose a guy, when you lose guys like Herbig and Benton, you're going to drop the defensive talent. That's just it. And and even even as high as we were on the the possibilities of this team and the offense of this team. We were skeptical even coming into the season about the, the linebackers issue, like inside, outside, everything. We we knew there was an issue at the defensive line. Mm -hmm. We did think that from a secondary perspective, we were better than we are, but we, we did see that coming a little bit. So I, I will give Tressel the credit. I think he's done a good job. Uh, starting games, clearly not, not the best, but that's, that's a lot of talent too. Longo, I agree with what you said about Longo. Um, I think – just let's give him time. He is going to do great things. And you said you said something I think you were right on. Unless Fickle has lost faith in this style of offense, I think Longo's going to be back, and I think he's going to be fine. And as far as Fickle is concerned, I, I think let's just – if you if you want him gone, that look, that's your opinion. That's You have every right. I, I, I encourage all fans should have whatever thoughts they want to have. I don't have that thought. I think he's, he's right for the program, and he's going to be the guy that will take us to the next level. It's clearly going to come with some bumps. Um, every, all the changes culturally that he made, I know you talked about the culture being broken and, and I think that some parts of it certainly are, but he is trying to improve those things as far mm -hmm. as from a fan perspective, the culture of the fan culture and, and fans are the lifeblood of any, any club, any organization. And I think he gets that Macintosh mm -hmm. gets that. So I like the direction of what we're doing in the, in the program and where we're going. It's going to come with some bumps and these guys now have to step up in the recruiting game. They've got to prove that not only can they get the recruits, 
but they can coach to win games as far as through the year, improve, adapt, learn, grow. That all has to be there because you can bring in all the talent in the world. If you can't develop and grow and get better throughout a season, you're going to fail. And Fickle will fail if that can't be solved. I think it can. So overall, I'm totally good on the on the future of this program, and I like the direction we're heading. So I want to say one thing about this, on the especially on the defensive side. Uh, for the people that are really bagging on on what Trestle's done, we have not been a a very a defense that's caused a lot of havoc, and we haven't caused a lot of turnovers. So if you look at it, the sack rate that we have is not great, and the turnovers haven't been there. And yet his scoring defense is actually pretty darn good for what it for the lack of talent that we have. So if we can't put pressure on a defense on an offense and you can't turn them over, and yet you're still keeping them from scoring, that's a positive. We gave up 24 points in that last game. For the most part, they've held teams under 20 most of the season. And I think we'd all say this isn't a great defense, and they're still doing a pretty darn good job of, of putting the offense in positions to win games. If we're averaging 30 points this season, what are we right now? Like 10 and one or like nine and one. Yep. Like we're much. just not getting it done offensively. Like that has been the problem. So anyone that's calling for Trestle's head, it's like the defense has not been the problem. The offense just has not picked up and done what they're supposed to this year. And we need to figure out a way to, to fix that. Yeah. It's been a tough one, guys, but I'll tell you what, we feel the pain. We feel the pain that we're all going through. Um, it's, it's rough. And we have two games left. We got Nebraska. We got Minnesota. Purdue, by the way, put up 49 points against Minnesota. Isn't that, be- Isn't that beautiful? We'll see. It's so we'll- beautiful. It's beautiful, but it means we also are going to have to do that. Remember, Purdue's a team we crush. And guess what? Purdue's clearly getting better. Um, Ohio State got, had a big win. Michigan was the, the big game of the Big Ten yesterday was Michigan over Penn State. They're clearly just, you know, showing their – um, their strength and they're, they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. Everything that's happening with them. If you didn't hear Harbaugh, I can't be on the sidelines the rest of the year. Um, and Maryland did beat Nebraska 13, 10, Justin, we've got Nebraska coming up next week. At this point, the goal is win the ax, please. I mean, seriously, like I don't want to, I don't want to have another year where Minnesota fans who are already, by the way, laughing their heads off, looking at us. And we can say the same thing about them, but oh, we were yeah, the ones who thought we were going to be really good. They might be feeling that way, but I, they're, they're melting down every bit as bad as we are. They want fickle or uh, fleck gone. Yeah. They, they want him out the door and it's like, well, yeah, guys, I, I, call, I, I may have been way off on Wisconsin, but I had almost called what Minnesota is verbatim. I said five and seven is a definite possibility. They're playing Ohio state next and then they're going to be going to us. So if we can find a way to win that game, I will just revel in the fact that they don't get a bowl game and that we they had the exact record that I was predicting for them. Yeah, I mean it's not going to be easy. We're going to, we're going to Minneapolis for that one, and it's just you know we'll see. I will. Who knows? I I would like to think that we could win next week, but honestly, at this point, I'm I'm not. I mean, I have no faith. I have no faith in our ability to come back from this. I would like to think that the 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 players are going to feel this pain and everything that's happening and seeing stuff like this and. And if players are watching this, boy, I really hope we get it done next week. I mean, I, I don't, I hope that there's a turnaround, but I don't really expect it to happen. And it's just, it's rough. Justin, any final thoughts on football before we, we before we touch on basketball a little bit today? Um, better days will be coming, people. <laughs> better days. Like, it's not going to stay down forever. I do think Fickle is a guy who will get this done eventually once he gets his pieces in, and everyone that's that's locked in on this. You know, I think the talent level that we're bringing in coming forward, and I said it before when we when we were comparing the classes from 19 and 21 to what we have here, I like the talent level and athleticism that's coming in with this group much more than either of those classes. So I'm really looking forward to the, the infusion that this group is going to give. And we will get there. Just give it time. Let the process play out a little bit. We'll get there. Well, man, let's move on to something a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter. Um, Tennessee came into the Kohl Center on Friday night and beat Wisconsin. Justin, give me some of your initial takes from that game. I know that there are some bright spots to certainly talk about. What are what are your big takeaways um, after watching that? Um, I I think the store is going to be a huge asset to this team this year. Um, I don't love the number of shots that he took, but I you know looking back on it, I don't know how many of them were bad shots. 
There were some that were like not great. He got blocked a couple of times going to the rim where he's close, but he's also the one guy that I think can get a shot anytime he wants. Um, Klesmet had a bad game. He he was rough in this one. Um, I really liked how Blackwell played. He didn't he didn't hit a lot of shots, but he really looked like he belonged out on the court, especially defensively. And he's the guy who just looked really comfortable out there. Um, Were you surprised he only played nine minutes, by the way? I was. I actually thought he could have probably played another five or six and been fine. Um, Chucky played a great game. Mm-hmm. Like he, I, he, he was an, a definite asset out there. Um, the biggest takeaway that I've had from this, the defense needs to tighten up, and I think it will as the, over the course of the season, but they need to stop, stop dribble penetration. That will be – if this team does not make a deep run, that's going to be the reason why because they will not be able to stop teams from getting to the rim. And it's going to be you're trading jumpers for, you know, drives to the hoop for the other team. Now we did get to, we did get quite a few free throws, which is a plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, I think that this team clearly has bright spots and I think that the depth is obviously has, has shown to be really good. Um, and, and I agree with you on AJ store taking 20 shots. That's too much. Uh, but, and I think Tyler Wall should have taken more, right? He was, he only took, he was four of six. Um, and I know that, that, you know, he's still kind of getting the swing of things. He needs to be more aggressive because he has been in the past. Uh, I agree. Blackwell needs to play more, but I think there really are things to, to take away from this. Remember that CJ is still not healthy yet. Okay. And that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. He, he, you could tell he was struggling in that game. Right. We shot 25% from three. And when you do that, we were, we're a team that's going to continue to continue to rely on that. Um, I would have liked to have seen the inside players take more more shots. I mean, Crowell took nine, so that's okay for him. He had 14, but I think a wall should have taken more. I would have said like to see a little bit more, more on the inside. But again, Chucky, that's he is. I, I I tweeted out this week. I think as he goes, so goes the Badgers, mm-hmm. right? His dependability, versatility, defense, um, this distribution. He's playing really well and he's got a good great start to the year. And you see him in store developing a nice little chemistry. And I think that's going to take us places. So I'm I'm excited with what I'm seeing. I just it it stinks that you know we we couldn't get it done. But look, yeah. they're, they're the number nine team in the country. That Dalton Connect guy had 24 points. Yeah. Like they're a good team, and we've got a long season. So I'm okay with that. Um, what are your thoughts on the rotation, Justin? So obviously we we had so the, the Nolan Winter got 12 minutes. A siege got only got 11, but obviously that will come up. But after that, you know, I mean, Blackwell got nine minutes. Gilmore had six. What are you feeling about the rotation and how far do you think it's going to keep going down that bench as we progress? I I think Gilmore in this particular game should have played a little bit more. Winter, I, I definitely like him getting his foot I didn't wet. think I'd ever hear you say that, by the way. Well, the <laughs> reason why the reason why is because Winter's not quite there yet for a team of this caliber to play defensively. I agree. And, I agree. and it showed in this game, but Gilmore wasn't great either. Like, connect – Blew right by him yeah. for an easy bucket at one point and, and got the foul on it. Um, and that is going to be the problem. Like that is, that is where we need to see growth. Winter will get better as the season goes on. Um, but this was a very tough test for him because the dudes that they had out there for Tennessee were men. Like those were, those were guys who were developed and who could body him. And he, he just isn't quite there yet. And that's fine. He'll get better as this goes on. This is going to be one of the better teams that we play all season. Um, but what I took away from this, we can play with pretty much anybody and anyone That's that thinks right. that this looks like what we saw last year is not watching the game. They may be just looking at a box score because this was night and day. We we could get good shots pretty much anytime we wanted to in this. And we're doing that without Connor like store. He wasn't really efficient in this game, but I do think that he's capable of having nights where he goes off for 20 plus consistently because I just don't think he's going to get challenged at the rim quite as well as Tennessee did. Tennessee was one of the best defenses in the country last year. So yeah, they held him down a little bit. He also had some play, like some plays that there's nobody else on our team that can make in this game. And I'll tell you what, I, I looking at the schedule, of course we have, we played Tennessee, we have Providence coming up, we have Virginia coming up and, and then in, within the next month, we've got Marquette, Arizona and Michigan state. So the playing games like this is really, really good for our team and the growth of our team and oh, yeah. getting this experience and the adversity of playing games like this so that when we get down to March and we've improved and we've got our rotation kind of set and things are going and players are playing better, it's going to be – it's really makes for a nice start to the season. I know we're, we're not – we didn't get the, the win, but I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. And there are a lot of good games um, coming up. 
What's been your biggest pleasant surprise that you've seen so far from this team? And conversely, something that concerns you? Um, actually, I'll, I'll take this one first. I still think defensively, you got you actually already said mine. Dribble, dribble penetration defense is not there. And of course, rim protection is still going to be an issue. That's concerning to me. One of the other things that's still concerning is a little bit of scoring drought stuff. We still have a little bit of that in us. And there needs to be a little bit more concerted efforts to, to now that we've got our players, now we've got AJ store, we've got guys that can do different things. We need to be a little bit more creative um, offensively and, and doing some things that are a little bit different. Um, and I think my biggest sort of pleasant surprise uh, has been Blackwell. I really, I really liked his game and watching him grow throughout the year is going to be a lot of fun. I'm not concerned with the scoring droughts. I, I think Tennessee is a really good defensive team and we actually, for the most part, I mean, we dropped 70 on them. This is a game that we probably scored 45 last year. So I think that this was a – there are guys right now looking at it that can do some things, especially in store. Who I, When you're struggling, he will be able to get a good shot. You will be able to post him. You'll be able to do some things with him where you're going to be able to get a, a shot that he's capable of just doing something to a defender that nobody else on our team can do. Um Post defense, that's the spot on store that I'm 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 not I don't love. Not post defense, but defense in general. His perimeter defense is lacking. It's something that needs to get better as the season goes on because he could be a sore spot going into this. And, and it's something Ryan and I talked about during the game. The reason why you don't want him and a CG and playing together is you have two guys on the out on the wings that are are guys you really don't want to be playing together at the same time defensively. Let's get in a few more comments here before we wrap up the show. Uh, Parker Moses, what's going on, guys? This team is far from where they want to be football-wise. Give it a couple of years to take those recruits and watch out. Tyler Strubber going back to basketball. That won't go away, Rajiv. We're Wisconsin. Scoring droughts are what we do. Dave Leonard says they need to play Blackwell more for sure. Justin, uh, final thoughts about everything that happened in Madison this weekend with the basketball team, the football team, the volleyball team even lost. Wait, I mean, no, they're, they're, wait, we're not going to discuss that. We, we'll <laughs> let the girls have their – that's their mulligan on the season. We'll let that one go. Listen, that team Especially with, with Anna Smack out. So, I mean, your best player is missing. That's that, that, that team is fantastic, and I encourage anyone to go watch more of them. They are a really, really amazing team. Yes, they did lose to Penn State, but – they're going to be in it. I can't wait to watch that tournament. I think that there's such that that team is just filled with great ambassadors for the program. What Coach Kelly's doing, like they're they're doing great, and it's it's really nice to see it. And I I'm so proud of that team. And it worked mm -hmm. as as the season continues. Justin and I are going to make an effort to talk about them more. They they really deserve our mm -hmm. focus. We we've talked so much about football and and how disappointed we are with that team. And we talk about how excited we are with basketball. But here's a team in volleyball that one of the best teams in the country. That the, the heart that they play with. And what they're doing for the university. It's really, really special. Um, <clears throat> thank you guys for listening. We'll be back again on Wednesday for our quick hit midweek episode. And um, hopefully, guys, as Justin said, he told me today and he said it again on the show, better days are ahead. <laughs> we just have to believe that those are coming. Thanks for listening, guys. As always, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin.